Hello and welcome to Sandlike, where today we're going to be looking at Bliss. Now this is kind of one of the old school fan favourites from Muse, um, so it was inevitable that this song was going to appear on this series, but we're finally here. Now for this song, I'm going to be using the Manson MA2 Evo with Sustainer, just because I want to. Um, we're going to go through my signal chain, uh, every pedal I'm using, every preset that's in the bank, um, and kind of every sound that... Um, it brings to and how it's applied for the song. We're gonna, I'm gonna show you what it sounds like before, just on its own, the raw sound, and then how I apply that in there. But before we get into the full video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and hit the notification bell to know when I upload new content. Now let's get into pedal cam. Right, so here we are at pedal cam. For Bliss, I am using patch six, which is a quick run through is um, a whammy delay and phase 90. Now for, now for this, I am using the harmony octave up, and, uh, and the phase 90 engaged with some delay. We get this sort of sound with it. Such a really nice sound, really ethereal, really great for contrasting against the kind of bigger stuff that, that comes on later on. Uh, patch B is the blues pedal turned all the way up. Get, we get this sort of sound with it. Really good as a nice crunch. I really like that sound. And patch C is the overdrive distortion. It sounds like this. Great, awesome, powerful, and you can really hear the full chords brilliantly. And finally at D is the big muff, which goes like this. Great, awesome, um, full of mids, really punchy stuff for bringing out those octave sections and just individual notes. So, let's start. Okay everyone, buckle in, it's time. For T. Beginning of the song, patch A. We get to we go for the nice, um, kind of, spacey sound. It's a sound that I really like using for this song out of all the possible combinations. Um, it's the one I kind of prefer to go for. Um, it's kind of coming away from what might just be a bit of a light crunch to, um, crunch and some delay. So if I just cue that sort of sound up. So it would sound something like this. It's okay, but I much prefer the, the lighter touch. And the way that I've got the delay um, kind of set, there's not so much feedback. If we just if we turn the feedback up a bit, obviously those notes remain for a little bit longer. I mean, I like to have it between the kind of where it is now and where it was before. There's not so much kind of emphasis on that, and the the, the level of the repeats is quite nice as well. There's not not too much, not too little. And if you want to take it to an extreme, what does that sound like? So with the DD7, my delay pedal, the level um, for the level for the delay is at 12 o'clock almost, and the and the feedback is just behind 12, and then it's tap tempoed in uh, along with the song. So that's where that comes in. And the the phase 90, as we've seen on pedal cam before, it's um, kind of pointing over at nine o'clock, just a nice steady wave. It's not too slow. If you take it all the way down, it might just be too slow. kind of does pull some of the weight out of it. So if we just put it back up. It's a very subtle effect, but I really enjoy using it. And then the main focus of this uh, of this effect for me is the whammy and putting that extra harmony octave up um, is really good. So that sound goes from, is the just the intro section and also kind of the mid kind of break just before the big octave bit um, comes in, just before the final chorus. And that's, that's essentially it. It's very straightforward. Uh, in terms of the setup for that, there's a lot of effects involved in it, but 
it's a really simple sound and um, it's kind of the basis for kind of songs that we've looked at before. Um, pretty much the mirror, apart from where the delay is at for Sing for Absolution, is the basis, apart from the Phase 90 for uh, solos for like Hysteria and so on. So it's, for me, my interpretation of the kind of quintessential kind of like out there kind of Muse sound basis is just um, kind of like the template, if you will. So it's really good for that. So then we go from the intro to the verse. Let's do that. So before we dive into the verse, we need to refill on T. That gives me the ability to play. So for the verse for Bliss, uh, I use patch C, which is the overdrive distortion, as we've seen. And it sounds like this. <laughs> It's a really nice um, sound for me, and it, it's it's the kind of uh, distortion sound that I use for the vast majority of every song I play, not just Muse, but for everything. The blend between overdrive and distortion is more towards the distortion. It's not by much, it's more towards the distortion rather than the overdrive, not by much, um, but it has that nice blend between the two and sounds great on its own for a chord, um, for a chord progression like the verse in Bliss. <laughs> And that's the sound that I use for the verses, and then later on we'll get to that uh, between the, the kind of octave build. And that's kind of it for that, it's just that chord progression, there's no kind of extra hidden gem, um, but that's just where it is. The song is very kind of procedural and very straightforward. And then for the next part of the verse, I go on to the big muff, which is just the kind of the single notes, which are like this. And that's kind of it um, for that. Just uh, the big muff helps to uh, have more clarity and more presence for these for those single notes, which is where I prefer to use it. I don't really like to use the big muff or any kind of first tone for chords normally, apart from a few songs, maybe like Silver Sun pickup sounds, where it sounds a bit. And then that's that's pretty much it. And then the final part of the verse is just the those triads again but I go way over to the um, blues driver um, for to bring the clarity out for those quick individual notes where the um, big muff is too much adds too much distortion for the settings we have for it for it to sound any good and that sounds like this <laughs> And that's kind of it um, for the verse. So we go through all those three sounds um, for the whole thing, pretty much. So let's now look at the chorus. So for the chorus, we're staying on patch B with the blues driver, as that kind of offers the kind of the right amount of gain, not too much, not too little, out of the kind of the three options I've got for distortion. It's the best fit for what we really want it to do. It's now for this chorus. It's strange that I kind of do use the. Um, the blues pedal for it, but it, it does the job of not having too much gain to kind of distract from everything else. This is kind of the way I see it, very much a kind of pulled back sound. It's just there for just a rhythm sound. It's not doing anything clever or trying to be kind of right out there for everyone to kind of hear like the chorus for Supermassive Black Hole, for example. Um, this is very much like the chorus for Sing for Absolution, where it's just there purely for rhythm, no no thrills, no nothing. And it sounds like this. And then it changes. And then it, that's kind of, that's the, the crux of it. It's useful that it's kind of the same sound than the pre as the previous section which was just 
same level of absorption, same level of dirt and crunch, but then having the kind of more power behind it for the for the strumming um, helps to kind of up the kind of the the perceived kind of crunch and distortion of it just because there's more oomph behind it and it's even better when you're standing up rather than sitting down for it to get that real <laughs> And there you have it. So we've had the verses, we've had the chorus, we've had the chorus, and then after the second chorus for this, we then switch over to patch A and then do the kind of the intro we sound again. So it just goes like this. Then the, the way I see it for this is that it's useful to have nothing that's too overpowering to come down to this kind of kind of ethereal spacey sci-fi sound. It's not too distracting. I mean, it's a minor observation, but it's what I sort of prefer. Now that was the overdrive distortion over to the over to patch A, and that's for me too much. And then the big muff is just even too much more. Normally I do kind of like dynamic, dynamic range and that sort of thing, but just for the aesthetic and the kind of perception of this song, I like to have the blues driver go over to that sound. But that's just a personal preference, uh, but this is how I see the best way to kind of play Bliss. Not, re not just for kind of playing along with the studio version, but kind of conceptually on its own anyway. And then the, so that's the whole, that's the whole chorus. And then now let's go on to the kind of breakdown middle section. Right, so for this, um, I have two options for the distortion. It's either going to be patch C or D. So overdrive, distortion, or big muff. Really depends on the mood, how I kind of want at that at any given moment. So we'll we'll demonstrate both. Um, so we're going to go with patch C for this. So it's the same distortion as the kind of the intro reverse. And it's just it's just the octave just going up and then down. So it's. Very simple, very straightforward because it's um, just one note essentially, it's just an octave, it, the big muff can work as well. Like I said before, it's kind of really dealer's choice for me when I play this and again, how I kind of perceive the song to work conceptually. If you've got a big muff, I would recommend that you kind of lean towards more for that, for this sound, just because it's so different um, from the chorus sound, which is what this then goes straight into. That's where it, a really good dynamic range can really work the way I see it. But a normal, regular distortion works just as well as well. It's just if you've got a big muff as well as, it's good to kind of really get those, get that broad range out. That's how I would advise that you uh, approach trying to sound like Bliss especially for this section. And then after that, we just go into another ver another chorus even. So then after that, we then go into another chorus, which then just is just a regular one, and then we end on the kind of the F minor chord. And then with the outro, we have got options to kind of decide of how we want to take this. The way I have the board set up for this patch, I nine times out of 10 go for patch A and then just pick, slowly pick the triads again. Really good, nice way to kind of end the song, kind of to bookend the song with the same sound as we had when we entered it, and then the same sound when we leave it. But or we can remain on patch B and then just slowly strum out the full accord.
If you're going to go with that route, for me, I would advise that you have a, uh, that coupled with some delay, which would sound more like this. As with the midsection, it's really kind of the mood I'm in, but most of the time, personally, I prefer to just go with that kind of sci-fi ethereal one, just to give it that kind of atmospheric ambient feel towards the end of the song, to kind of give you that kind of, kind of, like, I don't know, that kind of, that that feeling you get when you listen to Bliss, especially for the first time ever, it's such a great feeling. For, for me, this, that sound, really captures that the best in terms of um, what my board can offer. And that is essentially how I play Bliss and how I would advise anyone to approach playing it, again, conceptually. Um, so let's just go to the outro. Right, so that was Bliss and how I approach playing and hopefully you enjoyed that one and maybe you thought of a few uh, ways that you can uh, take the pedals that you've got and how to bring it into kind of the song and what you can really do with and kind of any song really kind of think uh, going forward because this uh, song ha only, from the way I play it only uses one pedal at a time for this apart from the kind of ethereal bit it really does make you consider what your pedal actually as an individual piece of kit is bringing to the song hopefully it's kind of made you think how you can potentially repurpose some pedals to get the best out of it for kind of big distortion stuff and even kind of just crunchy stuff and then for kind of the more sci-fi stuff more just than whacking on a bit of delay, maybe combining it with some phase effects or modulation effects and then the whammy is always good for those sorts of things. But I do hope you enjoy that one. Now before we go, just don't forget to like, share and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.